From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on the New News. I'm Kelsey Boggs. It's going to be a busy travel weekend as many head for the path of totality in advance of Monday's big solar eclipse. MTN's Charlie Kleps introduces us to a few Montanans headed south for the big event, including one man who will be driving 20 hours for five minutes of action. Monday will be the first total solar eclipse that's passed over the United States since 2017. And while it won't be super visible here in Billings, that isn't stopping residents from hitting the road, grabbing glasses like these, and finding a place to enjoy the big event. We're kind of chasing totality. As the excitement for Monday's total solar eclipse continues to build, many are hitting the highway. Just seemed like the thing to do, and here we are close enough that we're, we're going to head north from here and, and uh, see what it looks like. Billings residents Helen and David Hester are currently visiting their grandson in Atlanta, which perfectly sets them up to find totality. It should be totality up there. I think it's going to be four to five minutes, and I've heard it's a really cool experience. They'll make the more than six-hour drive to Indiana over the weekend for a five-minute event, something Hester says is worth it after seeing the partial eclipse back in 2017. I was kind of taken with it, and I said, I want to go to totality in 2024. I think it's the uniqueness. Joe Lester is also gearing up for an eclipse road trip in the next few days. As a meteorologist at the National Weather Service, this is an experience high on his radar. You have to see a total eclipse. The partial eclipses are neat, but the total solar eclipse is 100% the thing that you have to do. Lester traveled to Thermopolis, Wyoming back in 2017, along with hundreds of other Montanans. Our MTN team was in Casper, which was right in the path of totality. Casper, Wyoming, the site of the total eclipse. This time around, Lester will have to travel much further. He plans to drive as much as 20 hours looking for clear skies. My plan is somewhere between northern Arkansas through southeast Missouri, southern Illinois. There's going to be a lot of clouds this year on the path of the eclipse, but I'm hoping to find a spot. But it's a gamble Lester says is worth it because one thing is certain, clear skies or not, he'll come home with lots of memories. It's again one of those things that's kind of a once in a lifetime or twice in a lifetime kind of thing. In Billings, Charlie Kleps for MTN News. And now we'll take a look at some of our top statewide stories for the day. Billings police make a new arrest in connection to the murder of a 12-year-old boy. A 15-year-old suspect was taken into custody yesterday, now facing negligent homicide charges for the death of Andy Martinez. Martinez's body was discovered last month in a shed on Terry Avenue, eight days after he was reported missing. This latest arrest comes weeks after police arrested a 13-year-old boy on suspicion of tampering with evidence. That boy was arraigned yesterday on two charges of tampering with evidence and obstructing a peace officer. Both suspects remain jailed at youth services. Meanwhile, a man has pleaded not guilty to charges accusing him of using bear spray on officers while they were trying to arrest him in Butte last February. Colby Zayer faces felony counts of assault with a weapon and assault on peace officers, as well as a misdemeanor, theft, and resisting arrest charges. Charging documents allege Zayer sprayed two troopers with bear spray during a brief standoff following a car chase with the Montana Highway Patrol in the 1700 block of Elm Street in Butte. One trooper fired his handgun after the incident, but no injuries were reported in the shooting. Zayer's $1 million bond was continued and he was remanded to jail. The federal government has announced Montana is el eligible for another round of funding to address gaps in digital access across the state. Montana was previously awarded more than $300 million in federal funding to support new broadband infrastructure, and they're set to receive $600 million more to continue reaching unserved locations. Last week, the federal government announced that it had approved the office's Digital Opportunity Plan, which lays out principles for programs that go beyond hard infrastructure to help Montanans access not only internet service, but digital devices and the skills to get the most out of them. The plan is targeting groups with extra barriers, like those in rural areas, the elderly, veterans, and Native Americans. Working with our community anchor institutions, that's a big thing we hear from hospitals that they don't have just even proper wiring, um, telehealth, and access to services across the state. It's obviously a huge issue, um, lack of devices and hotspots in areas like libraries, fire stations, things like that, um, workforce development, and online training. The state is also hoping to receive approval in the coming weeks to start taking applications for infrastructure grants through the BEAD program, which would direct hundreds of millions of dollars in federal money with the goal of making sure that every location in the state gets some broadband service. 
Montana's first and only full-time medical school is getting ready to celebrate its first graduating class. Future healthcare employees, leaders hope will stay in Montana to help ease a shortage. All of Montana's hospitals are currently confronting dozens, and in some cases, hundreds of open positions. This week, Rocky Vista University welcomed the Montana Healthcare Occupation Students of America group for its annual leadership conference for high school students. Organizers say it helps get Montana kids thinking about a future in the industry, and hopefully they stay close to home. 52 of our 56 counties are uh, in a deficit for healthcare workers. I definitely want to go out of state for my education and then try to come back and try to alleviate that deficit. Healthcare worker shortages aren't unique to Montana. The United States is predicted to suffer a shortage of, of up to 124,000 physicians over the next 12 years. The next generation of Montana farmers and ranchers are gathered this week in Billings for the state FFA convention. This event covers just about everything future farmers will experience in the industry. Students participate in meats evaluation, livestock judging, and even in aromas competition, where they smell things to identify what they are. Teens compete for titles and cash prizes, but organizers say the lessons these students learn are far more important. These kids have a huge task ahead of them um, in an industry that is continually shrinking in numbers and, and acres, but increasing on what we produce. You've got to be a scientist and a chemist. You've got to be an administrator and a bookkeeper. You have to have skills in leadership. The 94th annual Montana FFA State Convention continues today and tomorrow at Metro Park. Well, what really sparked my interest was the fact that every summer we burn uh, thousands of acres due to coal seam fires in eastern Montana. You can't always see them with the naked eye, but in this part of Rosebud County, the scars of coal seam fires that burned in the past are all over the place. Dead and down everywhere. It's a mess. I'm getting a first-hand look from two guys who know all about the problem. Rodney Dresback is the fire chief for Rosebud County, and Corey Chagas is the fire chief for neighboring Custer County. These coal seams right here, they, they cause wildland fires, and they just keep going and keep burning, and which causes more wildland fires. For the past three years, Chagas has been on a mission, pinpointing GPS coordinates of hot spots from the air, then hiking into those areas to see if they are indeed coal seam fires. How many have you mapped already in this area? We have over 700 coal seams mapped in eastern Montana. That's Bighorn, Custer, Rosebud, and uh, the Northern Cheyenne Tribe. Oh, did you hear it flare up there? Caught some oxygen and it flared up. Did you hear it? Yep. The fires can burn for years underground, even decades before flaring up. We expect the lightning storms. We expect the human-caused ones, but the coal seams are our wild card. Coal seams are one of the main causes of wildland fires in this part of the state, including the Richard Spring Fire in 2021 that burned more than 170,000 acres. And so it becomes this challenge on how are we going to keep addressing this. We're starting to see this 365 instead of April through end of September. It's becoming that kind of a challenge. The state is requesting $10 million from the EPA for more mapping as well as specialized equipment, techniques, and projects necessary to mitigate and extinguish actively burning coal seams in Montana. It would come from money set aside by the Biden administration to reduce greenhouse emissions. Mark Bostrom is the administrator for the Conservation and Resource Development Division of the DNRC, which would act as the lead. It, it really adds up quickly as far as the CO2 emission. It's not scrubbed. It's not like, you know, the power plants that have, you know, some kind of an abatement system on them, it's burning raw coal out in the environment. So I think it's a, I think it's a pretty good measure. Um, I hope EPA agrees and awards us a grant. Something these two firefighting veterans say would be a step in the right direction. This is something that needs to be done. And I think all of us working together, all the counties and the tribes in the state of Montana, we could make a positive impact to Eastern Montana. In Rosebud County, Russ Riesinger, MTN News.